So John Kirby was squirming with the uh, press court today. Well, actually, it was yesterday. Uh, and which he was asked, hey, how do you really feel about Netanyahu? How do you feel about that guy, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu? And how do you, how do you think Kirby handled himself? He seemed very, well, confused. He was squirming all over the place. It's almost like he had a bathroom emergency to do. You know? Like he, he he was holding it in and he couldn't hold it anymore anymore. So now he had to dance and move. Is there something you want to tell us, Kirby? Let's go and play this video. The Prime Minister of Israel is in the judgment of uh, the Chief Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, a war criminal. Um, isn't posting an alleged war criminal in the Oval Office undermining of credibility and moral authority? No, because we don't consider him a war criminal. But the uh, International Criminal Court does. We don't agree. And as we've said before, we don't find the ICC's uh, finding to be uh, relevant or appropriate in this case. We don't find him to be a war criminal. He's an ally and a partner and a friend. Well, the, the chief prosecutor. He's your best friend. You know, you know what that reminds me of? That scene from The Godfather 2, you know, where uh, Michael Corleone and his family are being put on trial. And that, remember, remember early on in the, in the movie, where there is that uh, corrupt U.S. senator who was being very disrespectful to Michael, he never be disrespect. They, they be disrespectful to the Godfather, and then they then they set him up. And then when the trials come up, that same corrupt senator was like, and again, knowing his role because he got blackmailed. I know spoiler alert. I shouldn't be spoiling the Godfather too, but whatever. You know, he's like, I'm leaving this because you know what? Some of my best friends are Italians. Oh, yeah, he's our best friend. We, we view him as an ally and a friend. How dare you? In this case, we don't find him to be a war criminal. He's an ally and a partner and a friend. Oh, he's a friend, a buddy, a pal. Well, the, the chief prosecutor says that uh, Israel does have legitimate uh, war aims, of course, but the way Israel chose to achieve these in Gaza, namely intentionally causing death, starvation, great suffering, and serious injury to body or health of the civilian population, are criminal. Is that a question? Because if it is, if it is, I've already answered it. We don't consider him a war criminal. <sighs> but I want to pull up a counter argument. Give it up for good friend of the show, Fiorella Isabel. Right now, this is a regional war. What's happening between Israel and Palestine? I wouldn't even call it a war at this point, right? I would call it a genocide. I think what could happen is it could expand into a more global conflict, especially when you have many of the neocons that are in Congress that literally want to go to war with Iran tomorrow that are saying we need to bomb Iran. And like they have been saying this for a long time, but it is has been increasing because of Iran's stance on the Israel-Palestine issue. And of course, you have to put in Russia there because Russia is allied with Iran. They do have a relationship with Israel as well, but they have been trying to maintain a sort of neutrality in the region. And when you disrupt all of this, which is, of course, this is the Gaza situation and what Israel's doing has disrupted everything, it can potentially get worse. And I think that would certainly overextend us. And I think it could be worse than what it is now. We think it's bad now. I think it could be worse because I think the ultimate goal of these radical neocons in the State Department and in the Pentagon is to go after China because China is the biggest threat economically and politically right now. So shout out to Fiorella because, you know, here's the thing, though. With everything that's happening, I feel like we are in an opposite world because you get statements like this. Now, again, this is Donald Trump we're talking about, so take this as a grain of salt. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has urged Israel to bring about a fast end to its war with Hamas, arguing that a drawn-out conflict is a is a public relations nightmare for the Jewish state. Trump, Trump, listen, buddy, a little bit of an understatement right there, okay? A little bit of an understatement right there because you know, no, no PR can fix the damage that Israel's done to its image, okay? 200,000 people, maybe much higher, are probably dead. Men, women, children starving. I mean, and look, to quote to quote you, Trump, it's, it's not good. It's not, not good, not, not good at all. 
Speaking of speaking of Fox News on Thursday, Trump said the war should end quickly because they are getting decimated with this publicity. And, you know, Israel's not very good at public relations. Yeah, well, you think Trump was a close ally of, his, of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu during his term in the White House and described himself as history's most pro-Israel uh, U.S. president. I think Joe Biden's got you beat there because even he didn't know what was going on, but uh, he he allowed the absolute decimation of Gaza. Now, if this happened under Trump, boy, would people be out there on the streets. People would be out there. He imposed sanctions on Iran at Netanyahu's request, moved the U.S. Embassy in, in Israel uh, to West Jerusalem, and broke the Air, A Abraham Accords, which saw Israel normalize relations with Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates, Morocco, and Sudan. Uh, in the months since Israel declared war on Hamas in October, however, Trump has repeatedly called on Netanyahu to bring the conflict with the Palestinian militant group to a rapid conclusion. You have to finish up your war, he told uh, Israel Israel, Israel Hayom, uh, news outlet back in March. You got to get it done, and I'm sure you will do that. And we got to get to peace. We can't have this going on. It's not good. Not good at all. Um, Trump goes on to say about the destruction of civilian homes is a very bad picture for the world. The world is seeing this every night. I would watch buildings pour down on people. Go and do what you have to do, but you don't have to do that. Very subtle, Trump. V very subtle indeed. <laughs> Go do what you have to do, but you don't have to do that. You'll do anything for love. Finish the quote, folks. If you know what song I'm referencing, I love you. In his interview with Fox, Trump also condemned the Democrats who protested Netanyahu's address to Congress, because of course you have to, on Wednesday, and called the, uh, for jail sentences for the protesters who burned American flags outside the U.S. Capitol. Uh, again, Netanyahu set the meet with President Joe Biden at the White House on Thursday. Of course, he did that yesterday was Thursday. And he also had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Kamala, to which she said, hey, Israel's got a right to defend itself. But I do want to just say this, folks. What's happening in Gaza and the fact that our own administration, our own politicians are allowing it to happen. I never, ever want to hear the idea of, oh, we, we always do the right thing. No matter what happens, we will always step up and do the task at hand to fight for that better future. No, our politicians are incapable of doing that. They don't know how to do that, Democrats or Republicans. All what this war has done, all what it'll ever be known for is laying the foundations for the next war. So many people have died. To all you latte drinking liberals out there, what, what's it like knowing that in regards for truly calling for a ceasefire, no Democrat has really done the job like effectively enough or efficiently enough because none of them have. And yes, while Rashida Tlaib did have that little flat, you know, little poster out there, war criminal war. I mean, again, Rashida, AOC, Bernie, you know, all you quote unquote progressives, you, you are in a neoliberal party that has a crap ton of APAC babysitters. What's the point of being part of that political party when they won't even listen to you? That's madness. Truly, it is. And what's it like knowing that even Trump is putting this a small attempt, just a small attempt, take it with a grain of salt. More people will die. That, that Lancet report that came out just a few weeks ago said 186 to 200,000. That number's probably up. Maybe it's at 250 right now. Or maybe it's at 300. Who knows? Could get to 500. How many more have to die? Just a quick reminder, you know, I did a segment on this show just a few months ago, way early on. I think maybe it's in February or March, where, in which, Netanyahu said that I could see this war going on up until 2025. If we're going to make it, we have to be better. Or we're all going to fall.